everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we're doing a little uh, Secrets of the XK8, which is going to be a kind of mini-series in some ways, and that is, we're going to do some bits and pieces connected with the seats, and today specifically, I'm going to do how to remove your seats, assuming they're all operating correctly. Uh, why would you want to do this? Well, in my case, I want to do a little bit of really light restoration on my seats. Um, they are the originals. So I've got a Mark I Jag, a very early Jag, and um, I have the Lear Corporation seats, which are the original design with the integrated headrest. My own preference, I, I think they look a lot better than the other seats. And they were designed for the car very specifically to occupy as little space as possible, um, whilst giving that Jaguar comfort. So I'm a big fan of them because of that. Uh, I wouldn't pretend that the later seats don't have a better head restraint, that they don't have better side bolsters, all those sorts of good things, but I'm a fan of these. And uh, yeah, my seats are actually in rather good condition for a 25 year old car, but you can see I've got little bits of uh, scuffing, discoloration, etc. So I'm taking them out to do a really thorough job of that, but you might also want to remove the seats because there's a problem with the mechanisms, because you want to fish out coins and pens which you've lost over the years underneath them, to thoroughly clean your carpets, to replace your handbrake cable, all sorts of reasons that you might want to get the seats out. So we're going to run through how to do that. So you are now positioned in the footwell, looking back towards the squab of the seat. And uh, here's the handbrake. And the first task to accomplish is to remove these covers, um, which are missing on some cars because mechanics get irritated with them and leave them off. There should only be a cover on the outside of the seat, the door side of each seat. Now, they are clipped in place, but there's generally some um, double-sided tape involved as well, and that is OE, that is how they're intended to be. Top tips is move your seats till they're in the backmost position, and also as high as they will go. There we go. So that's the best position for getting these things off. And I've got the handbrake side here. So I'm just holding the, the trim down in the middle whilst pulling up on the front edge. And mine's been off before, so it's coming off quite easy. Um, and I've unclipped it and roll it over towards the handbrake and you slide it out down that little gap there. So really easy if you know. If you don't, <laughs> it can be a real pain in the bum. So I'm just going to share with you what's going on inside here. Now at the back, and mine is a little damaged, um, there should be basically a bit of a hook. And that's going to hook behind the back of the runner. So if that's still in place on yours, then when you're putting this thing back in, you're gonna slide it back along the side, go almost beyond where you wanna fit it, roll it over and pull it forward until you feel it hooked over. And then you're gonna push the clip, which is just here. There's only one actual metal clip. You're gonna push that down and it's barb or um, detent correctly is just going to clip over the front edge of this bracket. Now because mine's missing a little barb there you can see where let me find the right spot for you about here maybe a little bit of scuffing on the plastic this is where the double-sided tape is applied and it was there from new these things didn't clip in particularly well from new and the double-sided sticky tape, or the remnants of it at least, is just here on top of the seat runner. So I'll show you that a little bit better once the seat's out. So, 
removing the cover. That's pretty easy. Um, plastic moulding marks, 1996, June. Um, the same tools were first created, 1996, March. So that's when the tools were created and then the last punch mark is when they were last dressed or repaired. So with that off, you can see the Torx bolt that's holding it down and there are four of those to remove. And if I just slide you along before I disturb anything else, hopefully you can see here the gray little bit. That's the remnants of double-sided tape in effect. It's a foam tape, but is used to hold this thing down. Torx bolt on the other side is uh, just there. To remove these, you're going to need a Torx T40 bit. Um, the T30 fits, uh, so be careful, it's a T40. You may have uh, a few Torx bits knocking around in your toolkit because they are a, it's a novelty item on some cars. They're used as a bit of an uh, anti-tamper device. But if you do have a Jag, then they make extensive use of Torx bits. So it's a good enough excuse to go and buy a few more toys. So a few Torx based sockets, if that's the right word for this sort of thing, is a, is a good thing. Um, a few screwdriver bits to fit into a nice handle. Um, in the range, I guess 20 to 40 is all you really need. There are smaller things, there are bigger things, but that will get you through. There's a few oddities on the Jag, which is a Torx T27. Um, can't quite think what that fits at the moment. I know one of them is the cover for the gearbox release, the plastic Torx, not on the next to the gear stick knob. But obviously you can get away with all sorts on that because it's only plastic. Now... These bolts don't go through to the outside of the car. It's a little double skin in there, so everything should be in really good condition. Like that, nice and clean. If it's rusty, you've got real water problems because it means it's sitting in between the skins of the car. So, one there. And... One there. And the seat is electrically operated and normally I would say it's really good practice to disconnect your battery before you start doing anything like this. This is one of those jobs where you shouldn't because you're going to need to move the seat. Not rocket science I know but it's good practice to put all the bits and pieces you take off a car in a specific tray. You don't scatter them around. I use these little magnetic trays mostly, they're really good. Now the next set of screws are at the back of the seat. And they are actually beneath where this runner is. Hence, you need to keep your electrics turned on. So now we're going to motor our seat forward. To reveal the other two bolts. There they are. And let's just address the elephant in the room right now. Of course, one of the reasons to remove your seat is the seat is broken, doesn't motor anymore. Yeah, quite a challenge because without being able to move it forward, the chances of being able to access both sets of bolts are quite slim. So um, we'll be addressing that specifically in one of the other videos in this little series. Mm. Somebody has already a go at this bolt using, I suspect, a T30 and therefore the head is a little bit chewed. So again, 
careful to be using the right tools for the job. the best chance of removing this without any grief. I'll put the T40 on the top there and using a hammer. Hi Gary! <laughs> um, just give that a good bashing. There we go. Plenty of downward force, and out she comes. And we're out. Yeah, it's actually cleaned the head up a little bit, me bashing that in, but not ideal. Now, without moving the seat, just slide it back again on its mechanism. To the back we've still got it in its most raised position that's most useful to us and what we're going to do is tilt it back on its mechanism if i lean the backrest back it's just gonna help me by supplying some weight and underneath we have to disconnect the yellow connector So you can see we've got a fair amount of um, flex on this, so you aren't going to be worrying too much. Here's the connector in question. There's a little button just there which you squeeze and that just allows it to pull straight out. But the cable should be still attached to the base of the seat here with a little fir tree clip. And that's important. One of the modes of failure on these seats is this wire becomes trapped and pinched underneath this piece of the mechanism or the motor, uh, various places. And it's usually because this has been clipped back in at some stage. Just got one of my little trim tools, which I can put behind that. From my angle, you can plainly see the fir tree connector. I know you can't, but I'll show you in one second. There we go. So literally, little fir tree trim connector that's been taped to the wiring loom. And that's to tuck that up there. And then we just have to lift the seat out. Carefully your back, bends your knees. And there's our seat out. Yee! So let's just go back to the car. My kneeling pad. And hey, look at this. Well, one, two, two pound ten, two pound twenty. £2.21. Right, cut the video. That's more than I normally make. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, genuinely, <laughs> that's one reason you might want to take out a seat. Hold on, that's not 10 pence, is it? Oh, it's an Irish 10 pence. I was going to say, I don't recognise the fish. Um, that's not a standard UK one. Probably still legal tender, though. Uh, so I didn't drop that. I also didn't drop that one, which is Irish Penny, Irish Two Penny. Oh, actually, I've made two pound ten and discovered my car's been to Ireland. Oh, that's interesting. 
because I haven't recently and certainly not in this car hmm. so found money this is uh, automotive archaeology as they call it and then there's a very small screwdriver nope they're not what that's for and then before we get too carried away with anything else there are four thick washers you want to take those off before you lose them or sweep them under the carpet. And they basically compensate for the thickness of the carpet so that the runners are above the carpet and don't bend or distort when you tighten them up. Without those, your runners can get really stiff. This is the wiring that we uh, are very careful to remove. I think it goes through a split in a carpet. I just pulled the plastic pin out of the floor that holds my mat down. These could do with a good clean. Lose all the other bits of treasure. Of any significant size. That's it. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hoover this area out while I've got the opportunity. So I'm just going to, the end of that, stick it under the carpet. So that I don't add any dust to it. And there we are. So seat removed, carpets hoovered, and uh, I'm giving the vinyl wipe round. Didn't spray anything slippy onto the pedals before anybody uh, inquires about that. So I used a bit of vinyl cleaner on here and on the dead pedal, which if you're not familiar with, I've got a secret to the XK8 that shows that this actually is an over pedal. You can remove it if you've got longer legs. And there's another pedal behind that, check that out. And cleaned up the kick down switch or button or lever, which is behind the throttle pedal. And there's a physical button. Mats, you see I've got some sort of damage on the carpet here. It looks like something's been spilt at some time, but it's a bit caustic. But, in general, carpets have come up quite good. Being ch warm charcoal, they are sort of affected by the pile direction, so they probably look awful in these photos. But um, trust me, that's pretty clean. So I could give that a vaxing, and I may well do. Uh, Vax is brand name, sorry. Uh, I may well give it a carpet wash, but other than that, that's complete. So, that's the mission accomplished for this particular video. And when you come back to see me again, then I will be doing a little bit on the seat itself and how it works. And then we might move on to some strategies for removing the seat in the event that it has failed in the wrong position. Right, I'm off now to go and see the dentist. Um, have a good one guys. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And 
please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.